today's the day. Know how this happened. Oh, you know what? Next week's no good for me. The Jonas Brothers are in town. I wanted to say, I bet you're all wondering why I've gathered you here, but you can see it from the title. So I am coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Before we go anywhere tonight, I need you guys to understand the story of how this all happened. So basically, <laughs> The story really begins last year when Harry Styles announced he was coming to Australia. I released tickets and we bought some. Had something to look forward to in the two years of lockdown, yada yada yada, you guys get it. Um, and then he cancelled. So then we got the refund, had nothing to look forward to. And then the Jonas Brothers announced they were doing a Vegas residency like a few months later. <laughs> And I got an idea. So we bought tickets to come and see the Jonas Brothers. And then a few months after that, Harry announced he's coming back to Australia next year instead. So I now have tickets for that too. But I also already got tickets for this. So thanks Harry Styles for letting me see the Jonas Brothers. If you're new here, hi, I'm Ali. I am a massive Jonas Brothers stan, a Joe Bro ho, if you will. And I've been a Jonas Brothers fan since I was like 12 or 13. How many times have they come to Australia? That's right. Zero. So this is a very big deal. I'm very excited. I just cried my eyes out in the shower to love bug. So that's how my night's going. I'm a little bit tipsy because I had a bit of a drink at the pool earlier. I thought it was mostly pineapple juice. Turns out it was, it was mostly rum, but it was very delicious and I'm in a great mood. I have been looking forward to this for so long and genuinely believe that it would get canceled or we'd have like another variant or we couldn't get on the plane or something would happen. Alas, we are here. We have made it from Australia. <laughs> to Las Vegas for those three stupid boys. And I'm so excited. I am gonna keep drinking this drink that I got at the pool because it's making me get kind of emotional. Like I like being a little bit tipsy for a concert. It just helps me get into the moment a bit more. I might regret this later. Oh, I regret it now. So one thing I haven't mentioned is what's happening tomorrow. Um, <laughs> a lot of you guys comment on this, but like when I'm in America, when I'm traveling in general, my luck is just, I mean, I feel like I'm already a very lucky person, but when I'm in America, it is next level weird. So tomorrow morning at my hotel, at my hotel pool, Joe Jonas is doing a DJ set, <laughs> whatever that means. Literally like the day before I got on my plane, he announced that he was doing this and I swiftly booked tickets. Congratulations, your purchase was successful. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. random is that? At our hotel, when we're still there. Imagine if we didn't know about this and we got there and they're like, pool closed, yeah. private event, yeah. Joe Jonas, and we like didn't have a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and so now tonight, when I get back from the hotel, I'm suffering from post-concert depression and feel like I have nothing left to live for. <laughs> At least I have tomorrow. I have no idea what it's gonna be like, but I will absolutely bring you guys along. I'm just so excited. It is currently 7.06. The concert is at 8. <laughs> so luckily I can see it from my hotel. This is our view from the hotel and that is the venue. I'm gonna give you guys three seconds to guess what I'm wearing tonight. Red dress. Red dress. I'm not original, all right? Let me just show you. Same mistakes that I made when I was 16. I decided to have a little bit more before we go. Cheers. Alright, I think it's time to go. Dance, 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 dance. Ready to rock? Ready to rock. want this night to end. It's closing time, so leave with me again.
Well, who was here last week, huh? All right. And who's first night, is it, huh? Well, last week we played this song we're about to play for the first time in about 10 some years, so. <laughs> Another special crowd. Everybody drinking with us tonight on this Thursday? That's what I like to hear. Well, let's try it. It's just 
weekend we, we just didn't and it felt kind of incomplete without it so I just I thought you know if I'm gonna make a request is to play this song tonight for this incredible audience because I just really like this song and I love when you guys sing along with us so uh, go ahead sing your hearts out one two three <laughs> every time I think I'm close to you what it means to know just who I am I think I finally found a better place to start No one ever seems to understand you need to try to get to where you are Could it be you're not that far you're the voice here inside of me The reason that I'm singing job it is the Too Faced Born This Way waterproof. I cried three times still looking all right. I don't even know where to begin but I feel like we need to have a little debrief now a little post-concert chat you and I. I went to Target and got some fruit because that is kind of all I can eat. Everything else here is kind of like not really vegan and I feel like after a concert you always just eat the most random things. Before I talk about tonight and what I just witnessed I, I just need us to reflect for a moment on what has happened <laughs> in the world. The reason that I'm feeling like this, yes, it was an amazing concert and we'll get to that. But like, imagine you have a favorite band 
since you were a literal child, <laughs> preteen, and you're a fan forever. They write a song about your country. They say she won't break my heart because I know she'll be from Australia. And then they never ever tour. They have not once. And like, I know I can't complain. We get so many people compared to other smaller countries, but like, I can't complain and I will. And so then around 2013, you're like, well, surely they have to tour at some point. Just kidding, they break up, even though they are brothers siblings i was not okay clearly people always say you remember where you were when zayn left one direction no i remember where i was when the jonas brothers broke up like that that was a death to me like lola in confessions of a teenage drama queen i still haven't recovered i still haven't forgiven them but then in 2019 something amazing happened the boys got back together 2019 i think was honestly one of the best years of my life because of that so this journey we've been on this roller coaster all culminates in the fact that again they didn't come to my country and so i had to take matters into my own hands fly to the literal opposite side of this planet this giant rock we live on and see them myself and boy was it worth it tonight was amazing so many of you have already been blowing up like my dms because you know i'm in the concert and you know how much this means to me and i know a lot of you are fellow joe bro hoes so thank you <laughs> i made this video to share with all of you obviously but also for myself to be able to look back at and just watch whenever i want whenever i'm feeling sad because oh my god tonight when they sang let's find the place where happiness begins I think we did. Also, one of the main reasons that like I felt like I really had to come to this was because somehow all three boys are now dads. So I'm like, it doesn't feel likely that they'll ever make it to Australia. It feels likely that they'll go on a hiatus soon for family time. Touch wood. Yeah, I was just kind of like, it feels like it's now or never. I'm so glad that we took this chance. Why not take a crazy chance, you know? Oh my God, you guys, do you know what song they played tonight? I mean, you do because you see the clip, but they played much better. The song they haven't played in over a decade. The song about Taylor Swift. I feel like, you know what? Let's talk about this song because I get people in my comments sometimes on my Taylor Swift ranking video that like didn't know about the Joe Taylor thing and it is my pleasure to educate people. Back when they were like 18, 19, Joe Jonas and Taylor Swift were together, the most iconic. When I find that person that, that is, is right for me and is he'll be wonderful. And when I look at that person, I'm not even gonna be able to remember the boy who broke up with me over the phone in 25 seconds when I was 18. No, you did not! There's two sides to every story, but you know, it ended badly. And so, Joe wrote a song with the boys called Much Better with the lyrics, now I'm done with superstars and all the tears on her guitar, referencing Taylor's song. And he, at this time, was dating Camille Bell, the actress. The whole song is about how his new girlfriend is so much better than the previous one. Like, so savage. The 2000s were the wild, wild west in pop culture, honestly. And then to retaliate, Taylor wrote Better Than Revenge, which is why she says at the end of the song, show me how much better you are. So much better, yeah. I will be honest, I love both songs. Are they petty? Yes. Are they problematic? Sure. Do they slap? Absolutely. Out of respect for one another, they don't play those songs anymore. But now they're on such good terms that <laughs> Joe decided to play the song tonight and he changed the lyrics, now I'm done with superstars, to now I'm cool with superstars. It's like he knew I was there and needed to hear that. I cannot fathom. <laughs> that I heard much better live in person. 13 year old me would never believe you. They also played Gonna Find You from Camp Rock and Be Be Good. I was so pleased with all the throwbacks. I'm gonna give the concert a 99.9 .9 out of 100. The only little thing I'm removing a bit for is that they didn't play Love Bug and I was so in my Love Bug feels. So I'm gonna jam out to it now. <laughs> What else can I tell you that you didn't already see? Papa Jonas was there, Paul Kevin Jonas Sr. Denise probably was as well, but I only saw Daddy. I don't know if I've ever met them or like seen them in person. And it just kind of like reminded me that, <laughs> that I was seeing them in person. I don't know, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> 
And if I sound crazy, you have to remember that I am excited enough for myself right now and also excited enough for 13 year old me that never thought this would happen. <laughs> so you merge those together and this is what you get. Also, I didn't buy merch. I really wanted to, like I don't normally buy concert merch, but I was like, well, this is such a big deal. Like I'm totally ready to, and the merch kind of sucked. They clearly didn't like go all out making a sort of proper, you know, design for Vegas. It was kind of just like a, a few pieces. I just figured I can get something better and cooler on Etsy, like a fan made design that I will just prefer to wear. Post concert depression is so real. You know, in Pretty Little Liars, when Allison turns around to Spencer and is like, Spencer, your family has the worst apples. Vegas, you have the weirdest fruit. <laughs> Why is it so sour? Oh, also, because the Dolby Theater was literally across the street and Joe's performing here tomorrow, I feel like they're staying at this hotel. <laughs> Am I sharing the same air as Sophie Turner? All right, well, I'm gonna, I was gonna say go to sleep, but I'm obviously not. I'm obviously gonna watch 72,000 videos that I do on my phone um, and just relive that for the rest of the night and then try and get some sleep and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, before I say goodnight, I do want to just say thank you guys so much. A, for just like, in general, being the coolest people, the nicest people in the world. Secondly, for the lovely comments on my recent video, I just like constantly feel like I'm saying thank you because you guys are constantly making me cry with how kind and caring and just sweet you are and reading those comments and feeling that love like I have felt for so many years just makes me so happy. And I feel like a lot of you have found me recently or or just like joined our family as people say but I am just so grateful because I know that that's not the case for a lot of people a lot of people that do social media don't have this warm group of beautiful kind people that I just love talking to and spending time with so I just know how much I appreciate you and genuinely look forward to uploading because I get to read your comments and I just feel like I'm hanging out with friends so from the bottom of my heart thank you guys so much I just feel so lucky. Also, on that note, please give this video a thumbs up. I love you guys. And I will speak to you tomorrow. thing about Nevada and Las Vegas is it is very very flat. I didn't actually realize you know until getting here just quite how flat it is. For example I'm in my hotel and if I flip this around so this is my view out the window and from here in Vegas you can see all the way to New York. <laughs> The audio for this clip was horrible because I was using my phone and it was just picking up sounds from the air conditioner, which I couldn't turn off. So we're going to do a little voiceover for you today. So here we have me showing you my outfit for Joe's pool party extravaganza. The dress code was upscale swimwear, whatever that means. So I'm wearing a bikini from the brand Triangle with a little matching skirt. I think it's very cute, very Vegas vibes. I'm expecting today to be very, very crowded and it is also 42 degrees, aka like 110 Fahrenheit. So I'm kind of scared. I have zero expectations going in. I don't know if I'll even see Joe. I'm just excited to see what the hell happens. <laughs> begin. <laughs> Hello, so it is a couple of days later. I finally have <laughs> kind of my voice back. I mean, I'm still pretty rough. You can probably tell I'm not in the best shape, but it was worth it. Let me tell you that. So I'm here today to explain everything that happened, give you a bit of a story time and run you through <laughs> the best day of my life. Let's just start off with a quick show of hands. Who thinks I'm okay right now? Raise your hand. 
Exactly, no hands. And you are right. Like, I know I've had some crazy things happen in my time. You guys know this. This was one for the books. This was a good day. So the night before, on Thursday the 9th, we went to the Jonas Brothers. It was amazing. You saw the footage. I wore my iconic sparkly red dress. It was a great time. We wake up the next morning and this is where we continue the story. I am not okay. I am speechless. I am over the edge. I'm just breathless. Thank God for sunscreen, dry shampoo, and a hat. The glue that's holding me together right now. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of yesterday. So as you guys saw earlier in the video, I got tickets to a party hosted by Joe Jonas in my hotel, which is just a weird sentence to begin with. So he was DJing this pool party and I was like, yep, I'll be there. Thanks, Joe. Put me on the list. And the event said 11 a.m. Cool. So I'm like, oh, it's at our pool. I'll just walk outside my room and probably be there. Now, I had never stayed at the MGM Grand before. If any of you have, you know. And if you haven't, it is a very, very, very large complex. Like, there are like three different wings, a million floors, and then on every floor there's like six different tunnels with like 20 different rooms. It, it is just massive. And then on top of that, there are like eight different pools. So we get downstairs to find out that this pool where the party was happening was actually like all the way on the other side of the building. And so I'm in my like bikini swimsuit. And I was like, what if I get there and no one's in like swimming costumes? Everyone's in like cool dresses, which they kind of were but it's fine. <laughs> and so anyway, we got downstairs. We walk the like probably one kilometer around the hotel to the other side and we get in line to get into this party. Got our stamps and we started going through the security line to get through and the guy was like, you're gonna have to lose the shirt. And I was like, what do you mean? I had on this little light shirt that I showed you guys in my previous video as a little cover-up, like a little swimsuit cover-up because it was 104 degrees, which is like 42 degrees or something insane. No shade, literally no shade. And it's very, very hot. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to burn. So I'm obviously going to bring a cover-up. And he was like, you're going to need to like check that in. You can't wear it. And I was like, there are literally boys and men here at this party going in wearing full shirts, but I can't wear this. And he was like, fine. And I, I've just never experienced anything like that, whether it was like, well, you're a girl, like you should just be in the bikini, like just go in. And if that were the case, it would make sense because at this party, the waitresses were in the tiniest bikini you've ever seen, kind of like what you'd expect to wear to get like a spray tan and have like minimal tan lines. It was very tiny and the biggest platform wedge heels you've ever seen. And then the men were in like a full on tank top, full on singlet top, full long board shorts and runners. And I was like, are you kidding me? These women are walking around in painful heels and the men are in all orthopedic runners. Whatever, it's okay. So anyway, I finally get through, we get into this party and it is like so crowded, so much more packed than I was expecting. I thought it would be like this intimate little gathering. No, it's like everyone from Vegas was there, which is interesting because I didn't know how many tickets were available for this party. And then also we get in there, I'm talking to these fans and I hear them say that Joe's not coming on until three. Now remember, it is 11 a.m. currently, it is 40 something degrees, the sun is out and there is no shade. And so I'm just like, Okay, interesting. Might need to rethink this. Like logistically, cannot stay here for another four hours in the sun. Like it's just not possible. I could maybe do that kind of thing when I was like 16. In my 20s, not gonna happen. Like I can't stand around in a bikini in Birkenstocks for four hours in the sun, in a crowd. Like it was just, it was just so much for my anxiety. It was just a bit of sensory overload for me. So I was like, okay. I went and spoke to the guy at the exit and I was like, if I leave, can I come back in later? And he was like, if I'm on the door, I will remember you. I will absolutely let you back. In. If it's not me, they probably won't because like it'll reach capacity, like the party's getting pretty full. And I was like, okay, that is a chance I'm willing to take. I just can't stay here all day. So went back to the room and was like feeling kind of bummed, honestly, because at this point I was like, I'm not going to get back in. I'm not going to see Joe. Like, what do we do? And at this point we realized there were still tickets left for that night's show. The whole day I'd just been thinking about how great the night before was, how quickly it went. It was a very quick show, I will say that. It was like only like an hour and 15, an hour and 20. It felt quick. Anyway, it was like the best show ever, honestly. It was iconic, it was incredible. They played so many great songs. And I was like, I wanna go again. And I also feel like they're gonna do a different set list the next night because they've been playing different songs. And so I was kinda like, there are tickets available we saw that there were tickets available for tonight's show. We didn't have any other plans. So now we do. <laughs> and it's so interesting. It's the kind of thing where like, if it was at home, I don't think I would cons even consider the thought of going twice. I'm just like not that kind of person to like 
do that. But something about being in Vegas just kind of made us feel like we should go for it. I think when you're traveling, you're kind of like, I'm only here once, let's fully send it. Let's live 100%, let's say yes to everything. And so we did. However, there was a problem. So once we decided, okay, there's cheap seats left, there's great seats left, like we can do this. We tried to book them online and then we faced a problem. This is a problem I've been facing in quite a lot of areas since coming overseas. So a lot of websites and accounts online that we have have two-factor authentication, which is a great thing. But when you're traveling, it's hard because I have an American SIM card right now in my phone, meaning I don't have access to my Australian number, which all of my accounts are linked to. So I'm on Ticketmaster and they're like, oh, you want to go to the Jonas Brothers? No worries. Great. We'll get you those tickets. Just tell us the code that we just sent to your phone number that ends in this. And it's of course my Australian number. Now I have my Australian SIM card with me. I can put it in my phone, but it doesn't have international signal. Like if they were sending me an iMessage, I could get that, but they're not. So this was so frustrating. And this went on for like an hour. We tried SeatGeek, Ticketmaster. I don't know, I, like every option, honestly. By this point, I'm looking out my window and I'm so frustrated. <laughs> I'm just staring out into the distance and I'm looking at the theater, the theater where the Jonas Brothers are playing, where we saw them the night before. And I was like, theaters usually sell tickets. I can probably call them and get them directly through them. So I called the Dolby, they had tickets and we bought them. I recorded this little moment because I was so excited. So have a listen. We have the Jonas Brothers we live at Park MGM in Las Vegas. We do have two tickets in section 102, dead center, row F and F right at the Tuesday night 15. All right. Here to go. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. All right, have a good one. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> So at this point, it's maybe two o'clock and I was kind of like, look, I know we have the tickets and we kind of said if we went again that night, we would just forget about the party, not worry about it because we're going to see Joe later. But I was like, look, I bought these tickets. The party's right downstairs. I kind of want to go back. So put the outfit back on, trekked back downstairs, all the way through the lobby, all the way through the hotel. But this time we ran into someone and they put us on the guest list. So I was like, that's cool. Thanks. I think we got through the line a little bit quicker. I don't know what other perks that would have had, but thanks, I guess. So I got back to the line. The guy was there. He remembered me. Thank God. Hopefully we still had the stamps on our wrists. So we were like, oh, we just went out to get sunscreen and came back in. They're like, oh yeah, here you go. Went back in. It was, if possible, even more crowded. And at this point, I was just like not really caring if we like saw Joe or if anything happened. I was kind of like, I'm here to have fun. I just wanted to check it out. I'm okay if nothing happens because I'm seeing them tonight. I started walking around. There's a little DJ booth kind of near the pool and I went up towards that and I realized that like right in front of me was Lily Reinhardt and she was with a boy and I was like is that Cole Sprouse? And I was like, am I like seeing in real life that they have gotten back together? It wasn't Cole, it was some other guy. She has a new boyfriend, I guess, but she is just so pretty, absolutely stunning. I didn't go up to her or anything because I just like, it wasn't really, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to be that person, but she kind of was wearing an outfit that reminded me of the dress that Taylor wore with Connor Kennedy and his family that day in the Kennedy compound. I'll post it here. It was like very cute, very kind of vintage looking. Interesting choice for like a Vegas, party but i think she looked amazing dnc was there like supporting joe because at first i was like that's jack lawless from like the jonas brothers band forgetting that he's in dnc with him and then i hear the party kind of like cheering and i turn around sure enough joe has just walked in with his kind of crew taking photos because he was there for tank tanqueray it's an alcohol i've never heard of this was the little promo <laughs> card that i was given tanqueray open 11 a.m you should have written really Joe goes on at 3.30 because that's when he appeared. Spinning into summer, DJ set by Joe Jonas. DJ Danger, for those of you that remember. So he came out, he played some songs. It wasn't like Jonas or DNC or anything. He played like, you know, music that he likes, party music. And he was just having a blast. Like he was talking to all of us. He was like hyping everyone up. And he was talking a bit about like, you know, we're playing another set tonight. Who's coming? Who's started drinking early? Oh, look how we feel it today. Who's drinking with us, huh? Nick was also at this party, but I didn't see him. And I'm kind of glad because I just feel like a Nick Jonas in the wild. It's kind of a scary thought to me. Like, I don't know if I ever want to see that. But yeah, Joe, his outfit was so cool. This place was just so crowded. And again, I cannot emphasize to you how hot this party was and how little or no shade there was. It was like Firefest meets Revolve Coachella Festival, but worse. <laughs> it was just so chaotic. You guys know me. I love the Jonas Brothers. If it weren't so insane, I would have stayed the 
whole time. But because it was insane, I didn't. So then after this party, went for a dip in like the regular pool just to kind of cool off and get away from people. Went back up to the room, had a rest, ate like an entire bag of Skinny Pop for lunch because everything in Vegas is so expensive. Everything in America is actually quite expensive at the moment. The conversion of our dollar right now is so bad and it ends up costing like double for anything. Anyway, I was like, I have nothing to wear. I only planned an outfit for the first night because I knew I was coming to one show. So I ended up wearing like the most basic outfit, just comfy. You guys probably saw it on Instagram and it was great. Like I just had so much freedom to dance and feel free and like, oh, it was so good. And because the night before I'd, I'd kind of like recorded quite a bit of the concert. I was just like so excited and haven't seen them in so long that I was like out of my mind, wanted to, you know, film as much of it as possible. And so the next night I was like, well, I probably won't film anything. Like I'm just going to sort of enjoy it, be present and like leave my phone out. And then I got there and realized how close our seats were. And I was like, yeah, nah, I... <laughs> I will be documenting this. There was the pit right behind the stage and then we were only a couple of rows behind that. So it was such a different experience from the first night because the first night I ended up probably watching like the big screens behind them a fair bit because you can obviously see them like close up. Whereas this time they were literally in front of my face. I could see their faces clearly and it. I was just like, what do you mean? Like that's... That's them, like I can see them in person. I've never seen them so close in person before. So this time seeing them like actually physically in front of me life-changing. <laughs> The more I 
we saw a lot of requests for songs this past uh, few days. And to, be, to be honest, we'd love to play all of the ones you requested, but I don't think we have that much time. But we don't have that much time. But we, we, we want to play something we haven't played in a long time for y'all. Uh, and Joe, this is pretty special. When is the wedding? October. October 8th. So you, you got engaged at our show at Red Rock. And you want to hear it separately. Finish this thing off real quick, or we can keep this party going. What do you guys want to do? Surprise me, stranger. 
So as you guys know, I was so devastated that we didn't get Love Bug the night before. They played Love Bug. I think they probably saw the outrage online and were like, okay, yeah, we need to fix that. They also sang, oh my God, I'm gonna cry. They, <laughs> they sang Inseparable and it was amazing. Just that day I'd been asking you guys on Instagram, like what's your favorite Jonas Brothers song? Someone said Inseparable and I was like, yes, thank you. Such an underrated song. Never gets appreciated by the boys. Like they'll never play it live. Lo and behold, 
they did. It was so good. They also played Paranoid, which was amazing. And at one point Nick was like, okay, we had one song we were meant to play here, but I think we're gonna switch it up and play something different. And they played That's Just The Way We Roll. Like, thank God they did. But I'm wondering like what it was meant to be. So all in all, the set list was perfect. I just saw that last night they played Jersey and like, that has been in my head all week. Like I've been singing Jersey to myself and I was like, wow, like it's so sad that they'll never probably play this. And they did. So I'm so jealous and happy for everyone that was there last night. And they also played Just Friends. Don't get me wrong. I think the set list was perfect. Like what I saw was chef's kiss, no notes. But if I did have notes, I don't care that much about Nick's solo songs. I think because it like makes me resent him for breaking up the band to do it. It like just reminds me of that time. But I will say hearing Joe Jonas sing Jealous right in front of my face, in front of my ears and my eyes. That was a good time. They ended both nights singing Leave Before You Love Me. And I was like, it's a it's a good song. Like it's fine. But like, I would rather hear 705. <laughs> or what's that song? Hey, we're gonna be all right. Or time for me to fly. Or Australia. <laughs> it, it would be so hard for them to pick a set list when they have six albums plus Jonas LA. Like, oh my God, they sang camp rock songs. They sang my first night, Gotta Find You. My second night, Play My Music. I lost my shit for both of those. I just wasn't expecting it. Never thought I'd hear them live. And also, <laughs> as you guys probably know, well, if you're Jonas fans, it's always like Nick, Joe, Kevin. Nick's always on the left. If you're looking at the stage, Kevin's always on the right. And so literally felt like Camp Rock because they were in their same positions. This is Connect 3 in front of me. It was so cool. That was truly like a life made moment. I mean, you saw all the footage from the concert, but it was just a dream. I'm so glad I A, went to the party, even though it was kind of weird. It was just like a fun experience. And B, so, 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 so glad that we went to the second night or the fourth night, I guess, of the show. But our second night, it was amazing. And this is my lesson for all of you. If there is something that you know that will make you really, really, really happy, even if it costs a bit of money and like you're wondering if you can justify it, I just think you should go for it. Like things like this, like a live experience or you know, a concert, anything that is just gonna create an amazing memory, I think it's always worth it. The things I've probably spent the most money on in my life is travel and concerts and I don't regret a single cent or moment of it because they are what makes me the happiest. And so I just think you should always say yes. Well, I better go because I kicked my friends out of the room to sit down and tell you guys this story. Thank you for hanging out with me. I really hope you enjoyed this. I can't wait to edit this video and just like be able to watch it forever. And I hope you guys feel like you were there. That's what I want is to feel like that you got to experience this with me because I know we've been through a really shit time for the past two years. And so being at concerts and traveling again, I hope you felt like you were there with me because that's just what I wanted it to feel like. I wanted you to feel like you were having a good time with a fellow Joe Broho. So I'll speak to you guys in the comments. You can subscribe here if you want. You can give this video a thumbs up. Actually, that would mean a lot because this trip has been very expensive and that would help me out. From the bottom of my heart, I love you all and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!